I jumped into modeling. Modeling was, I would say, not necessarily the best thing for someone's psyche, not necessarily the best thing for someone's image and, and their sense of self. What you're being hired to do is to be the spokesperson for a particular image. Okay. So then you find yourself having to be kind of a chameleon mm -hmm. and you find yourself having to change who you are and maybe you know adhere to strict diet. Staying out of the sun was something that they told me I had to do. So yeah, I mean, God literally showed me the value of the world when it got shut down. What's up, everybody? Thank you for joining us at LED Live. We got an awesome show for you today because we have a very special guest. Her name is Blessings Win, and she has worked on music video production behind the camera, in front of the camera. She's gonna tell us her testimony, her story of what got her into that and how God got her attention and actually pulled her out of that. So I'm really excited to get into this. Blessings. Uh, Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. Um, let's see. I'll start with uh, where I was raised. I was ra raised in Berkeley, California. My parents are um, basically what, what what you would call hippies. Mm -hmm. um, my father was an Irish, Jewish, German, Scottish man who was a teacher, um, an arbitrator. And my mother is from the Caribbean side of Nicaragua. Um, she was seven day Adventist raised. And so I had that, you know, faith as my upbringing. My father, however, he was more teetering toward the esoteric side. Mm. You know, he's a product of the, the 60s and 70s where, you know, um, yoga and um, esoteric Beatles. philosophy, the Beatles yeah. were really, really key. And so he definitely had an esoteric leaning. However, he did let my mom lead in, in terms of raising us, in terms of our faith. So that was really good. I mean, I got to know Christ young, so that was awesome. Yeah. Um, my father was like my best friend mm. and um, loved him dearly. We were really, really, really close. And growing up, I looked to him for everything. And I didn't really realize just how important he was in, in my life until he became sick. And... Um, Right when I was about nine months pregnant, uh, my father had esophageal cancer, mm -hmm. and um, I'll get to that a little bit later, but this is, this is all the things that were starting to build up in the future that I wasn't aware was going to happen, and so I was kind of just living life, you know, in the sense of, I'm young, I'm going to explore, you know, like, world, what's up? Mm -hmm. So um, I jumped into modeling, okay. and um, modeling was, you know, I would say not necessarily the best thing for someone's psyche, not necessarily the best thing for someone's um, image and, and their sense of self. Why would you can, say that? Yeah, can we unpack that a little bit? Yeah. Because I know there's a lot of people that, that have an, uh, a sort of a glamorized view of yeah. that business. Yeah, well, you know, modeling, yeah, you know, you get to be on, you know, you're the main image or the face or something. But in reality, what you're being hired to do is to be the spokesperson for a particular image. And if you don't fit that image, then you're not going to get that job. Okay. So then you find yourself having to be kind of a chameleon mm. and you find yourself having to change who you are and maybe, you know, adhere to strict diets, adhere to, you know, like one time someone told me, don't be in the sun because then we're not going to be able to use you wow. as much as we would if you don't look white. You know, oh, wow. and so staying out of the sun was something that they told me I had to do. Um, wow. You know, it, there's a lot of like negativity too, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I, I spent a little bit of time in in Hollywood, and and it's like 99% no, you're not the right person, you yes. don't look the right part, or yes. whatever. And so mm -hmm. that plays on your your you know poor self image, I guess, if you're just yes. hearing constant like you know wrong things about you. You're not, you know, you don't look black enough. You don't look. Yeah. Hispanic yeah. enough. You don't look white enough. Yeah. Your hair is too curly because I, you know, usually I have my hair really curly. But at this time when I was modeling, even though these pictures are curly, after this point, I stopped wearing my hair curly because I was losing jobs. You know, oh, really? they wanted me to look more quote unquote white. And so, um, well, there's a lot of trends and fads yes. and maybe you were hot 10 years ago, but that's not what we're looking for exactly. anymore. So like your old news then. Right. Uh, and um, so then, in, you know, after I graduated from college, I ended up um, going to um, Hollywood. And so I broke into Hollywood 
And I was there about a month and my best friend, who is now one of the executives at Disney for Buena Vista Pictures uh, Animation, she and I were just starting little, you know, budlings in, in Hollywood. And she says to me, hey, I got a friend I want you to, you know, meet. And this guy happened to know a producer or, or a director, I should say. And he was one of the hottest directors at the time in the music uh, video industry. And his name was Darren Grant. And so I did an interview with him and I basically told him, I'm the missing piece to your puzzle. You know, like you need me because I'm super creative. And so he said, I didn't, you know, he'd never had anyone say anything like that to him. So he said, let me try you out, you know. So it was like confidence that yeah, won him over. Yeah, exactly. So I went from being in front of the camera to now standing behind the camera. And I... I forgot to mention that when I was at the university, I went to a Jesuit university. So by the end of my four years there, my my faith was really thrown off kilter because the Bible wasn't, you know, a teaching instrument. So I, you know, got to Santa Clara on a chemistry scholarship. I intended to be either a doctor or a patent lawyer. I decided I hate arguing and I can't stand infectious disease, so I'm out, you know, and I switched my major to communication with the te te television production um, emphasis. Hmm. So that's how I ended up in Hollywood. Got gotcha. a switch. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. huge switch. <laughs> yeah. So um, <laughs> I'm not going to be a lawyer. I might as well be a model. Yeah. Right, right. Well, I had been modeling since a child. Oh, okay. In all fairness. Mm -hmm. um, but I was always a brainy kid, you know, pretty smart kid. So it was definitely a path that I could have pursued. But this was more fun. Yeah. yeah. So it was you a know. chemistry scholarship. Yes. So yeah. I, I was at Santa Clara and was at chemistry. He, he's a chemist. You, know, you too? Yeah. <laughs> um, hey. Dolph Lundgren, when he came to the U.S., he had a full ride scholarship to MIT for hmm. chemical engineering. Hmm. You would not ever peg that guy as like a chemical engineering, like brainy nerd. Mm -hmm. So while he landed in the U.S., he went to New York and did an audition and he totally flipped his whole career. Mm -hmm. from that. See, and that's how it happens is, mm -hmm. you know, you get these opportunities and, and it's like, you know, you yeah. get pulled mm -hmm. in the opposite. You roll it. Oh, yeah. this looks more glamorous. Looks, I'll do that. Yeah. More exciting. Mm -hmm. And within, like I said, within a month and a half, which is really, really, really rare, you don't go to Hollywood and then just, you know, I land a job like this. Hated those stories. Right. <laughs> I know. So, so I was one of the people who actually went there. You know, it's not that I didn't do um, I'd never waitressed or anything, but I did work at a, a post-production house as basically a, a glorified um, barista, mm -hmm. you know, nice. yeah, yeah. so the guys would need caffeine and I'd be right. the one yeah. pumping, yeah. you know, the yeah. caffeine into them. And, wow. and, and a month and a half later, I landed this job and I was basically how, how the music video system works is that the major um, uh, record labels will mail out you know, an upcoming single of a promising or already established artist. And so, of course, they were already established. In fact, they were kind of starting to trend out. Um, but they had a song called Thank You in Advance. And so the director and I would sit together and we would listen to this song on repeat and come up with an idea like, you know, mm. what's going to happen? You know, what do you think this song is really about? And Are so that's sure how you do it. Are you it didn't have anything to do with you being a Jesuit trained that uh, mm. <laughs> oh, you got the I job as well. I, but that's you know, interesting yeah. to me mm -hmm. that they leave sometimes that creativity in the hands of, I mean, that just gets me, what do you guys think about this and what are you going to do with that? Mm -hmm. Because look at how many music videos have these like really yeah. esoteric ideas. Right. Or, you know, why... If there's just people coming up with those ideas, how's that happening? You like, know, I think there's a difference, though, I will say, because, you know, for me, I was just fresh ideas. I was, you know, coming in. I wasn't necessarily hungry and studying other people's works, which is what happens a lot when you're trying to break into that industry. You'll pick someone mimicking. and you'll say, oh, I want to, you know, be able to, you know, create videos like that guy. And I totally was coming in like just fresh blood. Yeah. They love so, fresh meat. Yeah, mm. exactly. And and the the rare, I think the odd thing about my experience in Hollywood was that, you know, how you said it, it's it's rare for, for you to get such a quick start. But for me, I would show up on sets and and I promise you, it's not a pat on my back at all. I would literally get roles on the spot. 
And I was really uncomfortable with that because I knew that there was something called, you know, the Actors Guild. I knew that there were, you know, these boundaries. And I knew that if I stepped in and did something like that, that I would automatically be like a hated person. Mm -hmm. And I also knew that it came with with an exchange, right? And usually those offers were sexual in nature. Of course. And um, there there is a definite drive in Hollywood to feed an, an insatiable um, quest for flesh. Mm-hmm. And I saw it all day, you know, and I just, and that's probably what kept me from going back in front of the camera. You know, I just said, nah, I'd rather stand back here because yeah, I don't yeah. have to deal with all that. Right, right, right. I, I think people don't realize that as well. I mean, obviously being a male, I didn't experience that on the same same level, but I certainly had friends and they all talked about it. I don't think there's one person that's ever come through that system that doesn't talk about that. And it's like, yeah, you want roles. And, and I mean, Harvey Weinstein proved that, right? You look back and, and he starts dropping names of all the people and you're like, wait, Mm. she's famous. She's famous. She's famous. And they've Mm. all had to compromise themselves in order for, you know, them to have the screen time. So I always make that a call to young people, especially Mm -hmm. like there's a girl in in my church now who really wanted to go to Hollywood. Her dad came and approached me, knew that I'd been there. And he asked me my opinion. I said, dude, I would never, ever, ever send my daughter into that lion's den. No. Never. And you're really stripping away a, a very important time. You know, the Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go. Amen. And if you train him up in this, this is the way that child will go, yeah. right? right? And right. and so, you know, yes, it would be odd to see an adult play a kid, you know, but, and I understand the need for children, act, you know, child actors, but you have to be so diligent about being by their side 24-7, yeah. not yeah. letting them out of your sight because the industry is just really not a place for kids yeah, and yeah. not even a place for young women. Yeah, I mean, someone who's grown, grown up in the business, like if it was up to Raven Simone <laughs> to write the law, the internet laws of parenting and children, like what would be some healthy boundaries that you think people should follow? That's a really loaded question, dude. I don't believe any child should be on TV or recorded until after they turn 10 years old. Use AI for all I care. I just don't think it's necessary. I think that before you put your child in the industry, there needs to be a psychologist, psychiatrist um, assessing the parents uh, beforehand. And if you get assessed and they need a child, then yeah, you can you can put your child on younger than then. I truly believe that. The parents should not be the managers of the children. The parents should be the parents, the parents, and also keep a job and not live off the child while the child is working to then make the child feel like if they don't work, the family's going to disperse. Coogan law needs to be stronger. And I also believe there needs to be a school. I believe that there needs to be a institution for children and their parents before they get into the industry. So that they understand the laws, they understand the secret laws, and they understand professionalism when it comes to working in the industry. Roman Polanski, right? He had somebody drop a kid off at his house. I mean, I've heard that story time and time again. There was a young lady who was... Yeah. And he fled, right? Yeah. To, to fled, evade yeah. persecution. But yeah. there was a young girl that was part of um, some superhero movie. Do you remember kind of looking at that clip and she all of a sudden came out and she was saying like, they, mm-hmm. they, they, she was being pressured to go alone to these people's houses. Yeah. And she's like, no, she's yeah. like 13 years old. No, yeah. I'm not going to do that. And like, that was her exit. But a lot of kids will stay, you know, especially the kids that come from like broken homes or the kids that, mm-hmm. you know, have really low self-esteem or, or again, didn't have any principled, you know, uh, guidelines for their life. So they'll stay and they'll tolerate that because the fame and attention they get, they perceive it as love. Uh, And sometimes the adults are encouraging and complicit. Absolutely. I mean, you think of like Brooke Shields. She was like 14. Mm -hmm. Yes. They were were doing topless and terrible things like that. And it's like, where's her parents at? Our mom was there. Yeah. Yeah. It's mind boggling. Like you can do a photo shoot like that, but it's highly. And I think some parents live vicariously through this and some make a living off these children. It's the same with like Kim Kardashian, you know, yeah, like her, well, her her mom being invested in that, (laughs) you know, has been pushing all the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the whole family, you know, and, 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 you know, not to have negative 
conversation about that family. But I really wonder, like, what's going on with the kids, you know, because they're so busy, you know, creating stories to keep them, you know, pertinent. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I don't see how they're spending quality time yeah. with these young oh, ki kids. Very true. Yeah. So I'm super curious, like, yeah. um, what kind of creativity did you actually put in these these uh, music videos? Do you look back on it now and do you go, oh, where did that thought come from? Yeah. And I wouldn't have done that today or, you know. You know, honestly, just listening, this one, it was all about creating a situation because the song is about you know, I'm thanking you in advance for all the things that you're going to give me in our lives, right? So our first child, our marriage, even to the point of, you know, me having to attend your funeral. That's really sad to say, but that's how the video went. And so I'm pulling in my mind all these images of someone who's foretelling the future in a sense, in a romantical sense, not in a mystical sense, but mm -hmm. in the way that a lover would say, can't wait to grow old with you. Yeah. Kind of yeah. So that was really the basis for this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That uh, seemed rather mild compared to uh, some of them. Are. Oh yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> and, um, you know, this, this is a, a shot from uh, the survivor video. So if we go back, you know, Destiny's Child was like this big, big hit at the time. Um, they had one song that did really well, and it was a Bugaboo. remix. No. It was, no, it was a remix with Wycliffe. Oh. And because they weren't doing that great, but when he remixed them, then they started getting some Put traction. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so then what happened was the, the original four broke up. And then they had just the two, Kelly Rowland and Beyonce, they then found two other girls, um, or one at the time, Michelle Williams, and they were the reformulated, you know, 2.0 Destiny's Child. Oh, yeah. And so the video was I'm a Survivor, and it spoke to the challenges of being a music artist, mm -hmm. losing, you know, um, your bandmates, and then still being able to survive. And so when we got the record in the mail, um, it was pretty clear, you know, okay, these women are, they're tough, they're, they, they're survivors, but how can we make it not so much about conflict between the women in the group, but more about we are, you know, per, we persevere. Mm -hmm. And so I came up with an idea of them being ship, shipwrecked. And this is like the temple, temple dance, but... Um, so did you come up with a temple scene? So, yes. So in storyboard, you sit with the storyboard artist, you give them your treatment, you sit with them and you tell them, this is my vision. This is what I want, you know, to happen here, here and there. Because to be honest, if mm -hmm. I saw this, I'd be like, look, this is Illuminati. They're doing some ritual sacrifice. Here right. At and see, and that's well, the crazy well, thing. Trained, right? I know. That's what we're saying. Like, and that's the crazy thing, because at this point in my life, it had nothing to do with that. It's just that sh they were shipwrecked. And where would they, you know, be shipwrecked at that we could have a stage is kind of what I was thinking. This is the part uh, that that, that I'm, I'm I really try to wrap my head around because mm -hmm. people always have this question: Does, Is yeah. everybody sitting in this room trying to like it's deceive like you? Strings. Yes, mm -hmm. it's like what's yeah. going on here. I think the inspiration comes from many different yes. areas, yes. and I don't think people understand where that inspiration no. comes from. And and it also depends too on the artist because if they were. Um, and at this point, I mean, this isn't Beyonce yet. You right. know what I mean? This isn't who she is yet. This is in their beginning stages before they are indoctrinated into Hollywood and the Mithracism and, and the religion of, you know, I know she's like self -worship. straight worshipped at yeah, this point. There's she people is. people that like, uh, mm -hmm. like have a religion around her. Well, but she also promotes her own religion, which is Yoruba Ifa. And when you watch her videos now, you'll see direct, you know, pointings to the gods that she serves. So like Oshun, wow. the river goddess. Um, so so, so mm -hmm. let me ask you this. You talked about the filtration system really basically of Hollywood of like you compromising, right? Mm -hmm. It seems like a first sort of filter filter of people getting in the door is, is sexual in nature, right? Mm -hmm. If you'll say yes, you're, you're, you're oh, kind of compromising advanced. for this. Mm -hmm. So is Beyonce someone that's just compromised in those areas to the max? Max, and it's yeah. like the compromise gets to the level of basically you're compromising which God you're you serving. Know, honestly, when I was working with her at this point, now I wasn't working intimately with her. You know, I'm more of like yeah, my creative behind the scenes, right? Yeah. Creative behind the scenes. I did give her some, you know, advice during the video, during the beach scenes. Um, which her camp wasn't too happy about, you know, mm. like, because it was very clear they were going to make her like the star mm. that she would have a definite solo career. Mm. Um, and, 
I would say that at this point she was still, they were praying in circles, you know, together, praying to Jesus. Wow. Um, I don't believe that at this point any of that was going on. But again, I'm not behind the scenes in her life. I can't really speak to that. Right. But I can say that the Beyonce that we now see mm -hmm. is not the Beyonce that was praying to Jesus when no. she first started. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I oh. think it's just a filtration system of the more that those people con like compromise. Yeah. It's like the people that make it and bubble to the top are like the ultimate compromisers. Oh, absolutely. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Because no one's going to give you the king, the keys to the kingdom, right. unless you represent that kingdom, right? And, and, I, and it's I, a it's a demonic kingdom. I understand it. Yeah. Like from God's perspective, He's putting in place His ministers and His people mm -hmm. to share His messages, and He's orchestrating that behind the scenes. The devil's just counterfeiting yeah. that with His Absolutely. ministers. He has His know? own disciples. You think about the funneling system, and and we talked a lot about this. How that what the relation relationship is between a man and a woman. If you'll break that representation, it's it's so mm. it's, it's such a metaphor. It's ultimately right? selfish for breaking that relationship with God, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So if you break that one, it, every other step yeah. is so it's much easier. Easier because a marriage really truly mm -hmm. is how can I, um, you know, please this other person? Mm -hmm. Whereas like this is flipping that system upside down mm -hmm. on its head. It's like porn, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get something out of this and I don't care what happens or, right. or what the reasons are for me to do that. The more selfish you are, the more self-minded you are, the yeah. more successful so you will be. So his ministers become yeah. ultimate selfishness to the point where you would right. let people worship you wow. over exactly. the God that you know of. Yes. Wow. And Satan doesn't care crazy? how he gets you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you look at, like, I should probably pull it up, but if you look at um, like Matthew chapter 7, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. It, the Bible always, essentially, when it looks at what's going on at the end of time, it's always mm -hmm. dividing people into two groups. Mm -hmm. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, oh, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Both groups are Christian. Right. No. Both groups are professing the name of Christ. Both yeah. groups are saying, yeah, this is my God. That's who I'm mm -hmm. praying to. This mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. my mind is, is on that. And, you know, it continues to go on. It says, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven... What's the difference between the two groups? One's doing, one's doing God's, God's will. will, one's, one's doing their not. own will. And, right. and, and what is the will of God? That's where like somebody comes to him and goes, what's the greatest commandment, right? Love love your God. Neighbor. Yeah, love your neighbor with all, your, yeah, you know, love your neighbor talk. as yourself and love God with all your mind, heart, and soul, right? Mm. Which is others focused. Yeah. Right. Look at what some of these people are doing to right. get to that position. Well, they've rewritten the Decalogue mm -hmm. and it's no longer about, you know, love thyself at all, really. Mm -hmm. it It's... It's not what they're doing isn't really love. Mm -hmm. yeah. What they're doing is just it's a it's a distorted view of love. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's one that says, I can be God mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I can be worshipped. Mm -hmm. So they've like you said, they've they flipped it. And so mm -hmm. will these be the people that go and say, Lord, Lord, you know, and he says, Get from me, I never knew you. Yes. Mm -hmm. But the people who I mean, it's just really hard to be in this environment and and hold yeah. fast to your Christian right. values. That's right. interesting yeah. what you just said there, because you were talking about parents who are living vicariously through their kids. Like, mm -hmm. I wanted to be a model, so you gotta be a model. Yeah. Satan doesn't really manifest in front of people and have people bowing down before him, no. but he's getting living the worship vicariously, vicariously through these yes. celebrities. Yes. Like when when you go to a Beyonce concert, they're all lifting their hands. If I could just touch her, well, never wash right. her hand well, again. and they're coming into Beyonce, like she says with Sasha Fierce, Sasha, right? Yeah. And they're yeah. worshiping her, so they really are they worshiping her. Yeah, they are. but they're just too. yeah, they're just disguising it as a yeah. person. He doesn't care how he how he gets you. It's yeah. like if you're not worshiping God, mm -hmm. you're worshiping right. Satan, there's there's no ultimately. there's yeah. no neutral place. Right. Right. There's only two branches, and the branch mm -hmm. is either you're with God or, or you're, you're for satan yeah and people really believe that there's this like neutral zone and they call that neutral zone new age mm. but that's complete deception yeah, right? it's the right. other way yeah right. this is um craig david and so he was big in the u.s around the 2000 2002 mm -hmm. mark he is at that point he was the equivalent of, of justin timberlake mm -hmm. but for the uk okay so he was actually extremely pleasant to work with he was mm -hmm. like one of the people that i would just no matter what say this was a good solid kid like you know no matter who was on the set no matter who was working he, he was asking you he how are you yeah just mm -hmm. how are you everything okay you know not a ferocious 
person at all. And most people in this environment are disgusting. Oh, yeah. They're yeah. divas. They're oh, yeah. devos. Oh, yeah. Madonna. I, I was in Samuel French one day. Do you remember what that place was? Where I yeah. had all the scripts and stuff like that. <laughs> and um, right after I walked out, Michael Jackson walked in. Mm. And I was like, oh, I wanted to see Michael Jackson. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but he, the, he had a producer that walked in front yeah. of him and was like, don't look at him. Don't look at him. They booted everybody out. And like, you know, I was like, don't yeah. look at him. <laughs> And I remember, I, I remember, I think um, um, I worked on a show with, um, what's the guy that's always, always on Oprah, the doctor? Uh, Dr. Phil, Phil. Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil's yeah. like that too. Mm. On wow. the show that we worked at, they yeah. walked around to the production and they were like, don't look at him, don't look at him. When he walks by, don't look at him. And I was like, what do you, what do you mean? Don't wow. look at the guy. Like, who because does that? Because you see those reptilian eyes. That. Right. Right. exposed. Right. <laughs> you know, and I, I think honestly, um, it's, it's kind of one of these very, uh, weird vacuum fishbowl situations where they want so badly to be respected, heralded, worshipped, but then it comes at a cost where you can't turn it off. Mm -hmm. There's no right. off switch for that. Exactly. You can't go to the grocery store if you're no. Michael Jackson. You know? right. No, right. you can't buy things, yeah. you know, that are that to you and I are normal, like toilet paper and be right. a star, right? right. right. You'll right. be ridiculed. If you, you know? actually spent time with a celebrity, like real time with that celebrity and observed how their life really is, I, I don't think the average person would say, oh, that looks so much fun. I want to do that. No. I mean, really, it's like mm -hmm. you have this glamorized view of it, but I think it is a fishbowl and yeah. it's it's golden handcuffs. Well, mm -hmm. the other thing, too, is that it, it promotes a narcissistic yeah. personality. And yeah. so many people... I think already have a leaning toward that tendency mm -hmm. because you can't possibly want to endure this mm -hmm. for what you're really getting, which mm -hmm. is no more privacy, mm -hmm. isolation in a lot of Everybody ways. Everybody talking smack about you. Yeah. How many celebrities he, have they dropped off yeah. the end yeah. after their career is done? I mean, it's like everybody they yeah. uh, they they take daggers at. You, and then it becomes protecting your kingdom. Yeah. You can't right? get away from it. No. Yeah. I remember once I've told you about this. Um, it was in the uh, Redwood National Forest, so north of San Francisco, visiting some of my wife's relatives. And we we're out in one of these national parks, and I'm looking, and I'm like, man, that guy looks really familiar. Mm. I'm like, I tell my wife, I was like, that looks like the guy from The Sopranos. Oh, which one? The main guy? James Gandolfini. Mm -hmm. Gan oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I went Not over that to I know him. anything about that show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, I'm going to just go over and then like check and then like see if this is him. Right. Like the guy can't escape from anywhere. No. I wasn't sure, but I went over and he's, and I was like, you know, I was like, you look a lot like the guy from the Sopranos. He's yeah. like, there's a good reason for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was like, you sound like him too. He's like, there's a good reason for that. <laughs> and so then I was like trying to get a picture. Yeah. You know, cause that's, yeah. that's just human nature. Right. We yeah. see yeah. a celebrity. Yeah. And it's like, I got to show my friends or whatever. But that was but super kind. He, he wasn't, inviting you to harass him but at the same time he wasn't yeah. denying he wasn't he was. oh, and yeah. he declined me yeah um i think he was with his kid and yeah. like a producer or something but i just i remember walking away from that being like you can't get away like no. it doesn't matter where you, there's no the middle of the button. forest yeah there's no yeah button. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if and if you know you work on something that actually people dislike you which is possible i mean you oh, can yeah. do something that people will all of a sudden turn on you mm -hmm. there's no turn off of nope. that either no. and people people have like these terrible lives after yeah. like everybody hates on them because of some part they played right. or whatever you know and i forgot to mention that before i landed this job you know for that month and a half and i was working as the barista at the post production mm -hmm. studio i was going on, you know, go sees because I was modeling and I was also, you know, auditioning for, you know, commercials and whatever I could, you know, get my hands on. And I remember I got a call for um, basically a werewolf. Oh. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so I read for the part. What, you were playing a werewolf? I was supposed to be this, like, part of this band of, like, a, a gang. Okay. Um, and so... I had to practice with my agent. He says, you've got it, like, go. And my inspiration for this werewolf role was actually The Exorcist. Because wow. when I was six, that movie had come out like a year or two earlier. And then it was put on regular TV. Mm -hmm. And I remember that my siblings were watching it. And I snuck out of my room because I just wanted to be involved, not knowing what was going to yeah. be on TV that night. And I saw Linda Blair in the worst, you know, it was 
awful. And to this day, there are times and spaces where I can't be in a tight space because of the things I saw in that film. Uh, but yeah. nonetheless, I use that inspiration, excuse me, for this role. And it got wow. me three callbacks wow. to where I ended up meeting with the director. And I think God intervened mm. because what I found out was that it was actually going to be um, the role Angel, Dark Angel, which oh. is, what's her name? Okay. Um, Jessica Alba's yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. role, yeah. right? Wow. And, and that was one of the times that they told me, you know, don't tan, don't mm. this, you know, like when, by the time you get in front of the director, I want you to look, yeah. you know, ambiguously white. <laughs> You're going to be dark angel, but don't look too dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah they yeah, probably yeah. told her yeah. the same thing. Probably. Yeah, that, they probably yeah, did. Yeah. And so I think, honestly, I really believe that God intervened because when I sat with the director, I did my exorcist bit and he loved it. And then he was like, okay, well now do it with a Valley Girl accent. And I'm from mm. California. So, I mean, like, it's totally fine. I can do that. <laughs> but for whatever reason, I couldn't do it. Oh, wow. I couldn't do it. Interesting. I could not. Yeah. And so I left there going, that's like my back pocket. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, how yeah, did yeah, I yeah. not, you know? And, and so I think, I do believe, looking back, that the Holy Spirit was like, no, this isn't for you. This yeah. isn't the life that I have. Yeah. Wow. Can I ask you a weird question? Yeah. Because I used to do this all the time, so I'm curious of your answer. Um, did you ever have a thought or conversation with God, if I get this part, I'll give you the money, or I'll, mm. I'll, I'll, I'll do something glorious for you? No. I used to make deals with God like that all the time. Yeah. And it's like, now I think about it and like, you know, whether I tried out for some werewolf yeah. part or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. I, I think I auditioned for um, uh, the Scooby-Doo one. And uh, uh, I was like, you know, yeah. supposed to be a stoner and this and that. Like God, God, help me. Yeah. <laughs> God, help me get this part. I'm yeah. going to get a stoner part for the. Mm. What am yeah, I doing? I, I honestly, I don't believe that I ever did. Mm. I wasn't, I, I wasn't sold out to Hollywood in that way. Mm -hmm. I was always a creative. Mm -hmm. And so being in front of the camera wasn't necessarily my, yeah. and especially That's, after seeing what the talent would do in order to get like right, front, right. you know, camera right. time. Right. I was like, mm -hmm. well, that was probably a fresh yeah. perspective to them, yeah. to you then, you know, it's like you were able to like excel because maybe you came at it detached. from, that, from yeah. that perspective where yeah. other people are like, pick me, pick me, pick yeah. me, please pick me. Uh, so this was also another one. This is one from my camera. This is 3LW. And you could see like back in the day, you know, mm -hmm. when it wasn't digital and you took like your mm -hmm. camera and you would print everything out. And this was in Playa del Carmen. We flew to Mexico mm -hmm. and it's a, it was a beautiful location on the beach. And, um, I went on a scout with one of our scouting directors and, and, um, we ended up, uh, finding this really cool cenote. You guys know what a cenote is. It's no. like a, where you, you see a cave with the water, fresh water oh, and fish yeah. and all that. So we found one of these really cool cenotes. And so we built a stage on top of that. And it was going to be a place, another location for them to dance at. Oh, and this was uh, jumping back, Craig David. And this was like his, his right hand, his best friend. Um, and me in the middle. Um, I actually ended up being talent for this as well. I was the DJ in the video. Oh, cool. funny. Cool. They had me cameo. And in fact, for the for the Survivor video, I also had to, even though I wasn't a stand-in, you know, I was literally part of the production team. Um, one of the, the girls freaked out. Um, Michelle Williams freaked out being in the ocean. So oh. I had to then put on her outfit and double as her. <laughs> um, walk in the ocean, right? Hmm. So, some, when you're in production, though, you have to do whatever's required. Right. They just you know? need to get it done. You need to get it done. Yeah. And this is in um, Los Feliz. This mm -hmm. is where we filmed, and so you could see kind of in the background. This is mm -hmm. our storyboards, Story mm -hmm. and so it's listed there so that we were, we're sure to get the shots that you know we we designed. What years were these? So this is between 99 till 2002. Okay, so I yeah. was there. I moved there in 99, February 99, and I was there till 2009. Yeah. So I was there about the same time you were there. Yeah, I wow. skedaddled because I ended up getting engaged. And mm. so I was having a long-distance relationship with um, my now husband. Mm -hmm. He was in Florida. I was in California. Mm. And so then after that, I started doing um, basically freelancing. And so directors would, you know, call me or email me and yeah and they'd say hey i got this video coming up yeah. you know do you think you can shoot me something and i type something up you know um so more moments and so the company that we worked for it was called a band apart it's now defunct but it was michael bernarchek 
Lawrence Bender, Quentin Tarantino. We were on the first floor, music video and commercials, first floor, second floor, I forget what it was, but I think third floor was movies. So they were responsible for like um, the Mexican, the usual suspects, you know, like, so we had heavy hitters in our production house. There's definitely, um, you know, a viable one. So I mentioned, you know, I was dating. And so my um, now husband and I, we were dating for three years and um, he was working his way, <clears throat> excuse me, his way up through the minors. And he ended up um, securing a job with the, in the expansion. Um, basically that was the devil rays who are now just the rays in Florida. And so, wait, so um, as a sport, baseball? MLB, sorry, okay, yeah. MLB, major baseball. league baseball. Okay. So he was, you know, moving his way up and right around the time that he, yeah, he secured his job with um, the majors with uh, Tampa Bay. We got married that off season. These are my parents and mm -hmm. my husband and I, and um, right as we finished our wedding and flew to our honeymoon, we got a call saying that, uh, the manager of Seattle, Lou Pinella, had been traded for my husband. And that's super rare. You don't hear wow. of a manager being traded for a baseball a player. player, right? Yeah. Mm. And so he actually, it only had happened one time before in history. And it had been like 40 years, 60 years prior. And this was the first time in a long time. Wow. So this led us into a, um, you know, a totally different tra trajectory. Mm -hmm. um, now my environment is a different cast of celebrities. It's, you know, sports celebrities. Mm -hmm. So we had uh, my first, our first daughter, Sadia, Aww. right around the time that she was 13 months old. Uh, my father was diagnosed with esophageal cancer stage mm -hmm. four. And so it was like, you know, you've got four to six weeks to live, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. you're, you're done, you know, and it was really, really difficult. Cause again, like I said, this was my best friend. This was, mm -hmm. I mean, he was my everything. He still did my taxes, even though, mm -hmm. you know, we had plenty of money to be able to outsource it. Um, and so at the time that um, my son was about to be born. So a month before my son was born, my father passed. Hmm. And that was a really, really difficult time. Um, the boy at the top, that's my nephew. And we had adopted him when he was 12. So wow. when I was pregnant with her. Um, and I was really, really suffering. You know, um, it may not look like it in these photos, but I was yeah. really, really, you know, just mm -hmm. grieving and, and down and out. And I remember a friend of mine said, you know, she was a Christian teammate. Her husband was a teammate of my husband's. And she said, um, you know, there's this guy, he's a healer. He can help you. Mm. And so I was like, you know, help, heal. Sounds good to me. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're sign Christian. I trust mm -hmm. you. Exact. Mm -hmm. Sign me up. Let's go. Mm -hmm. And um, and I went. And he told me things about myself that nobody do. And, yeah. and I was like, this guy's got a gift, mm. you know, like mm. he's a real deal. That's how they win your confidence. Right. Mm -hmm. And so um, that led to me leaning on him for support. You know, he started speaking to me in, in Christian terms and he himself was raised Catholic. So he was, you know, familiar with the, the lingo, you know, the vernacular yeah. of, of Christian, you know, Holy Spirit, you know, forgiveness, all these things. Mm -hmm. And oh, you must be a good guy. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so I didn't have the discernment to say, you know, he's a wolf in sheep's clothing, mm -hmm. you know. And so um, I really leaned on him. I just I know that he would do things to me that I was completely ignorant of the reality behind what they really were. So, for instance, he would say to me, you know, I know that things are really hard. Things are, you know, you've got a lot on your hands. You got your, you know, now you've got your mom to take care of. You got your two kids and your nephew, you know, your husband's traveling. And at this time we're with the giants, San Francisco giants. And so he's like, you just need to be reset. That was his terminology. You mm -hmm. just need to be reset. So he's like, let's just do some breathing exercises, you know? So I'm doing these breathing exercises with him. And then he would say, okay, just undulate your spine. So I'm like, inhale, raise your chest, exhale, you know, curve forward. And it was about, you know, seven or eight undulations like this. And then he would say, hold your breath. And then he would hit my chest and I would black out. What? Wow. And wow. when I would That's come weird. to, I would feel like I was trembling. 
Um, but I would also feel like nothing mattered. Mm. Everything was okay. Oh no. You know, it was just like kind Maybe of like a, a bliss kind of, kind of feeling, you know? And I didn't know what that was. I didn't know. Um, mm. And as our relationship progressed, he started speaking less in Christian terms and more in Buddhist mm. and Hindu terms. Mm. But I was still none the wiser because that wasn't something, yeah. that wasn't a doctrine yeah, if I knew. you're not familiar with it, right, yeah. Right. So this is my niece. And my niece is from New York and she's my older sister, Gloria's daughter. And we are exactly 18 years apart. And she had come out to California and I was thinking, I'm, you know, my husband and I were like, we're going to save her, you know, get her out of New York. We're, we're doing something great for this kid. You know, she's going to go to to uh, post back for medical school and we're doing something good, you know, by her. That was our mentality. Well, she was the only practicing Christian in our home at that mm. time because our, my husband and I were from two different faith, faiths and we really couldn't agree. He, he's a Sunday church kind of guy. I'm a Sabbath, you know, and so we really couldn't agree. And for me, it was like, I'm, I'm not willing to compromise. I tried Sunday. Just I know the truth. I can't do it. You know, right, right. it's just really difficult. He's a great guy. It has nothing to do with, you know, him. It's just what is your biblical understanding? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So this whole time she's with us for about five years and then COVID hits. Mm. And when the pandemic struck, see, and at this time, I forgot to mention, I became a yoga student, um, a teacher. You know, they, they said, oh, you'd be a great teacher. You know, I grew up dancing, so I'm really flexible. And before you know it, I got all mixed up in this yoga world and I started to practice spiritualism. But I, I was branding it Christian. Interesting. I hope our audience hears yeah. this. Yeah, I hope, I hope, I hope you hear yeah. this because yeah. we talk about this all yeah. the time. It's yeah. like people get into spiritualism through a door that they do not realize. They don't even understand it. And mm -hmm. it's like, this is the reason. Here's yep. the reason right here. Right Here's here. a reason. I'm a walking testimony. Don't open that door. Yeah. No. Anytime someone says to you, healer. Yeah. Whoa, yeah, right. you should have right. like alarm bells sounding in your head. Anyone says spiritual. Right. Mm. Yeah. You know, and I just, yeah. I just didn't, I was none the wiser. I just didn't know. So that was the gateway. And then it led to yoga. And then yoga just started to open because that community is, whoo. Yeah. 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 What I didn't like about yoga, I, I remember in, engaging in it a few times when I was there in Los Angeles. I did not like this repetitive thing. And then it was seemed like your mind just went away. Yeah. Not, and then they're yeah. saying words that I don't understand. Yeah. Never liked that. Yeah. And I was just like, eh, I feel uncomfortable about this. And I was Well, the never thing into too it. about it was that I just saw it as exercise. And I, I had been certified. My first yoga, 200 hour yoga um, certification was with a company called Core Power Yoga. Mm. And they're pretty much a chain yeah. all over. Right. And so it just kind of looks like, oh, this is like this new exercise. hot exercise where they, they, you know, kick up the temperature and you're just going to go in there, stretch and, and sweat, you know, and that's all I thought it was. I had no idea that it was an actual seance. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a, a moving worship of Hindu deities. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. But then you, you're trying to get into these contortioned, you know, just weird positions. And even though I was flexible, I was like, how do I get my foot there and mm. my <laughs> chin there mm. and my back here, you know what I mean? So then I started looking into what the mm. yogis say. Oh, trying to get better. Trying to get better. And then mm. now I'm sucked into the Vedas and the Upshanads and, and mm. all the, the Hindu scriptures. And now I'm reading the Bhagavad Gita, you know, and it's, wow. it's, it was wild. I had no idea. I thought that I was strong enough to stay Christian mm. and see the devil for when he came. And I, I couldn't. I couldn't because they've stripped away everything that would give you an alarm yeah. from yoga. Like you said, you go in, you have no idea what they're saying. Mm -hmm. They're talking in Sanskrit, which mm -hmm. is a spiritual mm -hmm. language mm -hmm. specific to mm -hmm. this type of worship mm -hmm. and the deity that they serve, right? Mm -hmm. So she was the only practicing Christian in my home. She was keeping Sabbath. And, you know, she would invite me. And at this point, you know, I'm also teaching dance. So... Sabbath, I remember um, 
I was teaching a class on Saturday knowing that I was doing, you know, against what that little still small raised. voice. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. But it's kind of like <laughs> in it's kind of reminds me of when you said, you know, God, if you would just yeah. mm -hmm. that was my moment. You know what I mean? Like, God, if you would just you know, mm -hmm. let me get this class because it's like a group of 60 right. people. Right. I'll and use it for you. And yeah, instead of making mantras, we'll, we'll see Bible verses. Exactly. Or, you know. And it was just, you know, uh, just I was confused. And so when COVID hit, the world shut down, which meant that all my jobs shut down, right? Mm -hmm. Because I had hung up my writing job, my production job, my ghost writing job, and I had taken myself into fitness and so now the clubs are closing, you know, and I worked at all the high end clubs. And I said to myself, hmm, I'm going to get what? a Peloton. I'm going to ride this out. Mm. You know what I mean? I mm. really thought I was going to be able to just ride my bike through the storm, mm -hmm. thinking of my health. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't thinking my spiritual health. Mm -hmm. And this is where this woman comes in and saves me. Beautiful. Wow. Because she was non -judg judgmental. And I was doing meditation and still doing yoga on the low on my own and then it all out of nowhere it just was like not working and I became full of anxiety and I was not myself like my personality went flat I was trembling I couldn't eat hmm. there was I, like a, a spiritual oppression that had just consumed me hmm. and I couldn't even enjoy my family. I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. Hmm. And my niece was just, would you like me to pray with you? Do you want to come, you know, w with me to worship? You know, we can turn on a sermon. And so we started doing that. And, um, Slowly by slowly, it was like I'd come out five, ten minutes, you know, then I'd go back to my closet and I'd read my Bible. And I mean, I was on my knees begging God. I'd mm. never experienced wow. anything wow. like this. Mm. And I had no idea what it was. And so over the months of COVID, there were a lot of things going on. And one of the things that I did was I called the spiritual guru and I said, can you explain what's going on? Like, you know, what is this about? And so he drew parallels with Jesus's pre-crucifixion story. And he said, do you remember how when the Jews wanted him or Barabbas over him? And I said, yes. He said, do you remember when Pontius, you know, interviewed Jesus and he knew that he was, you know, king of mm -hmm. the Jews. He knew he was the Christ. But he said, I'm going to wash my hands mm. of this. He said, that's what we're doing right now. He said, welcome to the end of the world. Wow, and it like killed me. Right. Wow. I was like, so then I had this momentary like laughter where I was like, I'm just going to go have fun. That's all that matters. You know, that was my thing. And then I totally just crashed. Wow. Wow. And at that same time you had the presidential election, the the drama between Obama mm -hmm. and um, or excuse me, Obama leaving mm -hmm. um Trump Biden and Trump yeah, yeah. and then you had Black Lives Matter. I mm -hmm. mean the world was just yeah, in yeah. chaos. Just up. Then there was a, a a documentary on the cabal and the elites. I don't know if you guys mm. heard about that. Mm -hmm. Very mm -hmm. dark dark 10 part series. Wow. A, gr a girlfriend of mine said she had watched it and she's a she's a victim of child like molestation and, mm -hmm. and abuse. And so that's what this is about. And supposedly like the Clintons and all these people, mm -hmm. Pizza Gate, oh, yeah. you know, that mm -hmm. whole mm -hmm. conspiracy. I, out of Shadows the, was a good yeah. one. Yeah, I mean, Out of that, Shadows, yeah. right. So this is along that line. Was it darker. Wayfair? Wayfair was like another thing when they were like sell, selling the kids using the like pillows and stuff like that. Yeah, I didn't nuts. see that. I didn't know about that one. But so the world is in just conflict and, and it's adding to my oppressed spirit. Wow. And then... Whatever spirit my guru was using on me started to show itself in my house. Oh, wow. And I remember laying on this therapeutic mat that I had on the floor. And I was in a yoga position, Supta Kanasana. So your feet are together, your knees are bent. So you're kind of like that. Mm. And, um, and I had fallen asleep. And out of nowhere, I felt something grabbed both of my ankles, snatched my legs, 
straight to where both of my knees popped, like hyper, you know, mm -hmm. flexed. And then I got dragged off my mat. Oh, oh, wow. And I woke up and I was like, why am I off my mat? You know what I mean? Like, wow. what's going on? Like, wow. I felt that it was visceral. I didn't dream that. That was real. Yeah, so wow. this apparition kept showing up and kept haunting me. Then I was levitating out of my body without oh. my even like wanting to do it. Sure. I didn't provoke it. Like, I don't I didn't know what was going on. So by this time, um, you know, I was getting I was studying to get rebaptized and I was going through the fundamentals you know the 28 fundamentals and um we started to watch um my kids started watching Doug Batchelor and we got where the church was open so we started going to Granite Bay oh beautiful mm -hmm. two hours you know yeah, away that's actually where my wife and I when we left Los Angeles that yeah. was the church we attended as the Granite it's a Bay wonderful one. job yeah it's mm -hmm. a wonderful church and you know we would make the commute my my niece, my mom, my two kids and I every Sabbath and four hour, you know, commute. And that happened for about seven wow. months. Wow, that's a serious that's a long commitment. Commute. Yeah. <laughs> it was for seven months we did that. That's how interested we, you were in I was, getting connected back. I was like, Lord save me. Because wow. he's by now he's rebuilding me. He's starting to shut these doorways down. My yoga alliance is gone. I'm now starting to read the scriptures where it's telling me you know, don't buy into asceticism. Don't think that you can worship angels and be saved. You know, don't believe in necromancy. Don't believe in a witchcraft. You know, all these things that I just didn't know were the exact things the Bible said yeah. don't do. Yeah, it's not just some old story that happened way no. long ago. It's like relevant to us today. Now. And so many people get involved in it. And, mm -hmm. and, Man, it's like like people don't know what they're playing with. And no, this they is, don't. Th this is a beautiful story, an example. I'm glad you were, you know, so mm -hmm. honest and open and sharing with us because people need to hear this. Yeah, it's not playing around no. with exercise. No, it's not. And so later, I I came to know, literally while I was researching and building the program, um, which is how I met Mikey for Three ABN Dare to Dream. The network um, that, you know, Yvonne had reached out after I came and did my testimony. She said, the Lord has impressed me that you should be the one to do this new series for us. Wow. So Beautiful. I said, let me pray on it. And that was like in May. And by September, I told her yes. Oh, and so gosh. for the, fall, the whole next year, I was researching all of this, you know, not just, I mean, looking at my yoga books, everything, because I also went you know, to an ashram and lived in South um, Kerala in uh, South India and learned from a third generation meditation guru, you know. So you weren't just you know, a weekend warrior. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> you were I like left in my it. family and I was gone, oh, you know, I like I was, um, I was you, into it. Did you still consider yourself a Christian? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, are wow. you kidding me? At yeah. no point did I say I'm Hindu, I'm, I'm Buddhist. No, I was like, I'm Christian. Yeah. And that's the thing is they don't tell you who the God is. Yeah. They just call it universe. I, I, yeah. I think Satan's very smart mm -hmm. with branding his form of religion mm -hmm. with like, oh, there's a there's a bunch of gods. You can yeah. whatever. You can worship all these different gods together. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason why Jesus was like, only God. Yep. Only I'm God. Mm -hmm. Yes. There's only one. Right. And you need to worship only one. And see, and even with <laughs> all my experience and living in India and and you know, getting trained by authentic, you know, uh, relatives of people who were founders in this religious practice, they at no point did they say, these are our pantheons of gods. Mm, yeah. This is actually, you know, um, transcendental meditation. None of that. None mm. of that was disclosed. It was just, this is Ayurvedic solution to disease. This is the types of breathing you can do to help you relax, remove stress. You could do this to lose weight. You could do that. You know what I mean? It was like yeah. remedy related. It was never, these are right. our gods. Because the one thing that the devil really also understands is just like Jesus, right? How do you get to somebody and how do you convert them? Mm -hmm. Oh, you help them physically first. Yes. Yep. He spent more time running around healing people. Why? Because that's a great door into somebody accepting Trust. whatever, yeah, mm -hmm. religious ideas yep. that you have. Yep. So at no point was it, and even with core power, None of this stuff. I mean, it was just, they did such a meticulous job of separating the demonic from 
what looked like exercise. So I was just out there and thinking I was Christian. And then finally, when I started, like I said, reading the Bible, it was revealed to me just how wayward and how I had just been whoring myself to all of these different deities. Sorry no. to use that no, word, no, but seriously. the Bible uses it. It's the truth of it. it. Right, it's the you truth know. of it, yeah. yeah. Steps, yeah. step by step. Mm -hmm. One thing I've been really kind of thinking about a lot is the life of Solomon. Solomon was this really brilliant guy because mm -hmm. you know he asked God for discernment, essentially, yeah. to be able to judge between his people. And God gave it to him. But that didn't prevent Solomon, who knew better, mm -hmm. who had to write out the entire law by hand, who had to study it all the days of his life. Wow. Mm -hmm. It didn't prevent him from going astray. You're right. No. And the same thing happens with Eve. And with Solomon, it's like a slow progression, right? It's a mm -hmm. slow fade. It's a drift. It's a, you know, it's one step, then another step, then another step. But you take Eve and her mind is more perfect than yes. Solomon's mm -hmm. and it happened like Still. that. I think mm -hmm. the, the struggle that, that us men have, honestly, between Adam and Eve, right? Eve was just straight up like, what? This thing talks. Like, how in the world does it talk? Mm -hmm. Adam sat there and went like, no, I fully comprehend what you just did. Mm -hmm. Give me the fruit anyway. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, mm -hmm. like we struggle with that mm -hmm. knowing and thinking that we know and therefore somehow, you know, we can it's dabble. A, it's a catch-22 because the beauty of it that we don't recognize is that God, unlike the gods and deities of other religions, the God that created everything, he gave us a, a moral autonomy. He gave us the right to believe. We're not his slaves. Right. So he right. gives us choice. Right. And he says, here's my law but it's up to you because I right. don't want you to feel like right. I There's forced no force. you to love me mm -hmm. or respect right. or obey me. Knowing the truth is not what saves you. I like it's that. It's following. That's right. Mm -hmm. Obedience. Mm -hmm. yeah. Following, ultimately following Jesus, you know, who says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. That's right. But you have to follow. You have to have follow through. You can know all kinds of things. Yeah. Solomon knew. Yeah. And it didn't prevent him from going astray. No. In fact, the end of his life, he says, that was a complete waste of time and I should have done it God's way. Isn't James the one that penned, um, don't just be a hearer of the word, but the doer, doer. as well? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So just the knowing, the mm -hmm. knowledge of mm -hmm. isn't enough. It's yeah. like, oh, well, the Bible tells me to steer clear of that. It's like Do it. a no. simple example. It's like you can know that if you touch a stove, it will burn you. Yeah. But if you don't believe that, <laughs> it doesn't matter. If you don't, if you don't practice mm -hmm. that restraint, yeah. guess what? You're, you're gonna, gonna get, get burnt. You're gonna <laughs> yeah. get it. Yeah. Good point. And I mean, that's to your point. He says, "If you love me, yeah. what keep my keep commandments." My commandments. Mm -hmm. And all of this, you know, the world is just. I mean, you become consumed by the flesh, you know, and you just you want to taste you want to you know you want to see you want to feel and and i'm i'm also not mad that god allows us to explore because when i was a a christian without trial his word kind of was mm, seemed a little heady seemed a little mm, mm -hmm. i don't know what you mean there right but then when i actually was adulterous and and i was out there living in the projection of evil and I came back to the word, then it was like, aha. So in the same way that happened yeah. with Solomon, right? Yeah. He's God gave him yeah. wisdom, yeah. but guess what? Wisdom comes by trying and living. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not saying go out there and do every bad deed. Right. You know, that's not my point at right. all. Right. But just know that you've never gone too far. Right. God can turn you around. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. And he, he did turn Solomon around. Yes, he did. Yeah. And he turned Manasseh around, who was oh my goodness. even in a yeah. worse position than Solomon in some ways. Right. Right. There's many examples in the Bible of people that have done absolutely awful things, yeah. probably mm -hmm. worse than Horrible. any of us, mm -hmm. and come back. And mm -hmm. so, you know, there's always a moment that yeah. God will. So that's, that's this moment here. And so I have, it just, it's beautiful to me. But, you know, she, she told me, so when she had moved into our home, um, we we have a guest bedroom that's an ensuite downstairs. And so we equipped it with everything she could imagine, right? Her first night there, she said that she was harassed spiritually. Things were coming wow. out of a mirror. 
Whoa. Right. She said, you know, I don't know what's in your house, but, you know, and so I'm thinking, and at this time, I am not reading my Bible. This is, you know, pre-COVID. I'm still out in the world. I'm, I've opened portals and these spirits are in my home. Um, as a side comment, my kids, I had them in a Waldorf school. So I actually wrote a book about hmm. this. Interesting. Waldorf right. school is what, a magic school? Pretty much. It's, well, it's a pagan I mean, school. Okay. Oh my. But I had, again, I didn't know, I, I didn't know what witchcraft looked like. So mm. Waldorf schools w were made by a guy named um, Rudolf Steiner. Mm. And Rudolf Steiner was a Nazi sympathizer. Mm. He created a religion called Anthroposophy. And he started schools called Waldorf schools or free thinking school oh, or wow. Steiner schools. Hmm. And they are everywhere. And it's literally an occult school. Hmm. And so my, when I enrolled my kids in that, my daughter started telling me there's a woman walking around at night mm -hmm. in a white dress. And again, I'm going, what, what is wrong with my family? You know, oh, like no. they're seeing things and, oh, wow. you know, yeah. and I had opened these portals, yeah. but they knew not to scare me. They right. knew not to come yeah. from me. Cause you'll go straight back into the church. Yes. Yep. And so yep. everyone else is having these experiences and I'm, didn't have it until I left yoga. And when mm. I left, that's when they started. That's when I'm getting pulled off. That's when I'm levitating. That's when wow. all these things are happening. And so, you know, my conscience said, go and tell your students. Yeah. Uh, they yeah. were not receptive. Oh, uh, I bet. Of course not. Yep. No. I, I remember mm -hmm. we, you know, we did a project on, on martial arts, which kind of had a tie into yoga and a bunch of other Eastern mm -hmm. influences from Eric Wilson. Mm -hmm. And he was a teacher of martial arts. Yes. And same thing mm -hmm. when he told his students, it was not receptive it's at all. Not. And they, he was actually teaching, I think it was in a Christian uh, martial arts class mm -hmm. so i mean it wasn't even that it was like this far out yeah you know like somebody coming to you out of the yeah. blue i mean they'd done you know christianity basically yeah. with it and he came out with with what he had researched and what he had seen too as mm -hmm. well and and was just like guys this is this isn't this is sun worship and this it is. is whatever and they all one by one were like no yeah and you open it. one door and basically it, it, it snowballs I was still teaching yoga. I was still in that world. And when you're in that world, there's a lingo that goes with everything. There's a superficiality that's in there. You know, you, mm -hmm. you pay for your peace, mm -hmm. right? Wow. So you pay for your yoga class. You, you walk around, your peace is holding your mat and practicing every day. Your mm. piece is buying your yoga clothes and looking cute in class. Your piece wow. is knowing how to get into the posture and hold it longer than anybody else. Your piece is, it's all exterior. It's all work. Like a club. So it much. is, exactly. It's all, you know, um, this fake humility and this, I've arrived, you mm. know? Oh. And all of, all of us were broken and none of us were willing to admit it because we were all wrapped up in some spiritualism that was supposed to be solving our issues, and none of it was. Wow. Yeah. How so long ago know. was this? So this, uh, COVID was what, 2019? So that was the end of it for me, 2019. So 2020, you started really having a serious walk yep. back towards God. Mm -hmm. But you said even after you went back to church, you were still teaching yoga. Like what? No, no, no. I, I was oh. done because oh, the done. world okay. had just... You know, okay. there was oh, yeah, no yeah, teaching. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And you're in California at this time? Yeah. So yeah, yeah getting, it was getting together was not an easy it thing. It wasn't happening. That's why I bought the Peloton. I yeah. thought, mm. like, I'm going to be fine. You yeah. know, clubs are shut, but I got yeah. my bike. Yeah. You know? Wow. Um, and slowly, you know, God really, I mean, I was so fearful and anxious and, and, and riddled with spiritual, you know, harassment and I just stuck to my Bible. I had no mm. other choice. No. Now, can I ask you a question? Like, and you don't have to answer it if you don't want to, but yeah. how's your husband at this point? You know, I think he's really confused because he's like, you're not the woman I married. Uh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> no. But I don't think that he's, he's so, he's really gentle. He's That's a awesome. very gentle person. Yeah. And I don't think I gave him enough cre credit as to how gentle he was, mm -hmm. because when I was going through what I was going through, I kind of was like, why don't you get it? Why don't you, you know, like, 
see what I see, see what I know. And it's like, I haven't done the things you did and mm. I can't, you can't expect me. You know what I mean? And, and so, and some of it was like, I couldn't talk to him about it because I knew that I had gone too far. Yeah. Yeah. So it was kind of like a self-perpetuating situation. Yeah. It's beautiful yeah. that you have a mate that is, you know, like He's there. Stuck with He's me through still it. Yeah. there through you. Cause mm -hmm. you know, I, I kind of feel like I had the same experience when, when God used my wife to get me out of my situation. Mm -hmm. Um, I was, freshly married and that transition happened and played out with my wife and mm -hmm. I, I don't know if I would have maintained the course if yeah. I didn't have that other person with me you know yeah. and so sometimes it really takes that I'm telling gentle you, soul. Like, I, I, there's there's no better way to evangelize than in your character yeah just living it yeah and and so you know my niece like she here, my husband and I were thinking, oh, you know, we're going to save her, get her out of crazy mm. New York and mm. get her on her track, you know, to medical school. And I had no idea God was going to use her wow. to turn me around, to be that anchor. Day. And and to this day, I mean, we're like sisters, you know, mm. um, and uh, love her dearly. In fact, I just have to give her a shout out because she actually um, is in her third year of medical school now. Wow. Beautiful. Very promising career. And she discovered a potential cure for pancreatic cancer. So what? the Lord wow. is using her. So right. look out for her. Anyway. Praise I love God. what you said about that she didn't judge you, though. Like, we're, you know, I, when I share my testimony, I'm always talking about that. You know, I looked mm -hmm. gothic and pentagrams and so many Christians probably walked by me and said, she's not going to get it, you know. And, and when... I did start studying with Christians. They could have walked in my house. I was I was a self professing Christian, yeah. still drinking daily, smoking yeah. daily, living with a woman I wasn't married to, wearing huge earrings. Yeah. And they could have come in and said, You need to pour that out, you two need to be married. And then I said, Get out of my house, exactly. you judgmental. Who right. are you? Right. But they came in, they were like, Let's study. Yeah. It didn't matter if I had a beer in my hand, let's study. Yeah. Let the word do its job. Let the Holy Spirit yeah. do its job. And they just continue to study. You want to come to church? Can we have Bible study in your house? And, and it was the words like a sharp two edged sword and it mm -hmm. changed my life. I started seeing scripture, be sober. We're in the last days. I was like, I need to be sober, right. get married, you know? So, yeah, I mean, God literally showed me the value of the world when it got shut down. What I found was that, you know, I had exalted myself feeling like God blessed me. You know, I have all these things because God blessed me. And now I realize yeah. I had these things because I pursued them, mm -hmm. I pursued them, and I had these things because I put them ahead of God. And so when COVID struck, he shut it all down and he made me see the value of everything. You know, mm -hmm. the Louis Vuitton, the diamonds, the, the Mercedes G-Wagons, the, you know, all of it was empty, yeah. meaningless, just, it could not save me. Mm -hmm. It could not put me on any other plane you than being stuck. You can't take it with you. you no. Know, and so it was like the, this. It, it was it was hard, but it was necessarily necessary. And I'm so grateful. God is amazing. Beautiful. Yeah. Wow. Beautiful. Wow. That is a wonderful story. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. Yeah. For being so transparent about even some of those hard, difficult yeah. trials and stuff. But if you guys were blessed by this story, please give it a thumbs up and share it with, with all your family and friends because there are so many people, Christians included, who are making these small compromises that seem like hey this yeah. is just about stretching or hey it's god's making my dreams come true but here's living proof of where that road leads and she doesn't want other people to go down that road and there's even uh you hosted a series called yeah. wolf in sheep's clothing you can mm -hmm. find that on with uh it's dare, dare to, to dream, dream on youtube mm -hmm. and there's a lot of uh shows coming out about this very subject about the subtle deceptions of the enemy and mikey's even one of my guests i am yes. I actually a guest on there so check those out and please remember to like and share this if you guys want to support this ministry you can do so by going to littlelightstudios.tv towards slash donate donate yeah. and you can do so by going to lightwear.shop where you can find some really cool t-shirts that are just a cool conversation starter to share the witness, you wear your witness and share the gospel with complete strangers. But we love you, we thank you, and we'll see you next time on LED Live. 
If you're looking for a way to spruce up your wardrobe this year, check out lightwear.shop. It's a Christian-owned apparel company with the belief that we are all walking billboards. One of the best ways to share your witness is to wear your witness. These conversation starter designs are the perfect way to look good while shining your light for Christ. For a limited time, use promo code LOVE for 15% off your entire order. That's 15% off for new clothing for you and maybe a gift for someone special. So go to lightwear.shop and remember, use promo code LOVE.